Hello friends, in today's operating system class, we will see the deadlock prevention that will come under fourth unit. So here we are going to preventing this deadlock and to prevent the deadlock, we have to check uh, the four conditions that, that is mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. If these conditions occur in your system, then there is a possibility of deadlock. So we need to prevent uh, that is we need to overcome these situations in our system. Let us see all those things one by one. Mutual exclusion. <coughs> Let us see whether we can avoid or hold this mutual exclusion. And in our system, we are having two types of resources. First one is shareable resource and second one is non-shareable resource. Shareable resource means the resource can be shared among more number of processes. Okay more number of process can share this particular resource. When come to non-shareable resource, only one time, only one process is being allowed to share this resource. Okay, so this is called as non-shareable. So if the same resource wanted by some other process, then the other process have to wait until the previous process completes its execution and it have to release this particular resource. Then only the other process have to utilize this particular resources. Okay, so this is called as non-shareable resources. Okay, when come to shareable resource, it do not require mutual exclusive access, thus cannot be involved in deadlock. Okay, there is no possibilities of deadlock in shareable resources because the resources are shareable, then the process no need to wait for this resource immediately they can access. Let us see one example for this shareable resource. Let us take this read only files. Okay, read only files are good example for shareable resources. That is if several process attempt to open the read only file at the same time they can guaranteed simultaneous access to the file. Because the file is read only then if more number of uh, process tries to access this particular file and the content will not be affected. Okay, simply they are going to read the content. Uh, hence, the file can be shared among more number of process. Okay, the process never needs to wait for shareable resources. Okay, this is the advantage of shareable resources. When come to non-shareable resources, Okay, here at least one resource must be non-shareable. What is non-shareable resources? At a time, only one process can access the resource. That is called as non-shareable resources. Okay, we cannot prevent deadlock by denying the mutual exclusion condition because some resources are basically non-shareable. Some resources are basically non-shareable. Uh, let us take one example. Suppose if it is uh, not read only file that is a common file if we allow the process to access the file to write simultaneously then what will happen we cannot allow all the process simultaneously isn't it to write something on the process okay hence that the write option should be non-shareable right okay for example mutex logs cannot be simultaneously shared to several process. Okay. See critical condition is here. Critical condition. So the instructions are very sensitive. Then what the mutex lock will do? It will allow only one process to enter into the critical section. Okay. Once the process completes its execution, then it will go out. Then only the other process are allowed to enter into the critical section. So this is what the purpose of mutex locks. Okay. So mutex locks, we cannot avoid the mutex locks, isn't it, when come to critical condition. So we have to hold the mutual exclusion. So mutual exclusion cannot be avoided in our system, so we have to hold. Hold and wait. First let us see what is hold and wait. A process is holding some resource and it requires some additional resource to complete its execution. Okay. And this this particular resource is already allocated to some other process then this situation is called as hold and wait here in this diagram process one is already holding this resource one but this is waiting for resource two for its execution isn't it but when come to resource two which is hold by process two okay this is also waiting this is also 
waiting process okay this situation is called as hold and wait here to ensure hold and wait condition never occurs into the system this is what our problem isn't it what we have to do we must guarantee that whenever process request a resource whenever a process request a resource it does not hold any other resources okay if, if a process wanted to request a resource means the process should not hold any other resources then only it can allowed to access for the resources so before it can request any additional resource it must release all the resources which is currently allocated okay suppose if the process wanted to access resource 2 resource 2 means the process have to release this resource 1 also if both the resources are free then only the process is allowed to access those two resources okay by this way we can overcome this hold and wait condition no preemption condition okay let us see how to overcome this no preemption condition in our system okay there should be no preemption of resource that have already been allocated that means this is a process and the resource is allocated to this process okay see once the process been completed the resource will be allocated only for this particular process in between the resource should not be preempted okay this is called as no preemption condition if the process is holding some resource and request some other resource which cannot be immediately allocated okay suppose if this process request some other resource also which is hold by some other process okay then this particular process have to wait until this should be free okay then all the resources the process is currently holding are preempted okay when this situation comes then the p that is this process have to release all the resources which is currently holding this one isn't it this have to release this particular resource okay that is the resource is preempted okay now the preempted resource are added to the list of resources that is free resources list of resource available resources this will be added into list of available resources which the process is waiting so that can be utilized by some other process now the process will restart only now this particular process this is our previous process isn't it so this have to restart this have to restart only when it can regain its old resources as well as new one that it is requesting okay if it does not find any other resource then immediately it will release all the resources which it uh, currently holding then those resources will be added into free available resources and utilized for some other processes isn't it then this process have to wait have to restart sorry have to restart to gain all its old and new resources okay so this is called as no preemption yeah the, we can easily overcome this no preemption condition in our system circular wait the last and final condition is circular wait um, here this is the best example for circular wait okay process 1 is already holding resource 1 and this is waiting for resource 2 but when come to process 2 it is already holding resource 1 but this is waiting for resource 1 okay so circle is uh, created here hence this is called as circular wait okay now let us see how to overcome this circular wait in our system for this we assign each resource type a unique integer number okay for r1 we have to assign some number for r2 we have to assign some number okay unique integer number have to assign for all the resources so that we can easily compare two resources okay each process request the resource is in increasing order okay if the process wanted to request a new resource and it is already having some old resource means this new resource should be greater than this old resource 
okay this should be greater number then only we can assign this resource for this process okay for example here we are having a set of resources called scanner disk drive and printers okay then the function f might define as the follows okay that means for scanner we can allocate integer 1 for disk drive we can allocate 5 for printer we can allocate 12 okay now the process request instance of resource rj if and only if that is the process already holding this ri now it requests new process rj okay we have to allocate the value of rj should be greater than this ri this newly requested resource should be greater than this ri then only this one will be allocated okay where rj is new requested resource ri is already requested resources okay when come to our example see initially the process have to use this scanner then the process have to use this disk drive after that printer will be allocated to this particular process okay that should be in the increasing order okay see initially the process holds this printer then the process is not allowed to access scanner or disk drive okay so this is what the uh, situation to overcome the circular weight up to this we have seen the deadlock prevention that is how to overcome these conditions that will cause us the deadlock in our system okay first one is mutual exclusion we cannot avoid the mutual exclusion that should be there okay when come to hold and wait yes we can overcome this hold and wait no preemption also should be overcome and circular weight also can be overcome okay only one mutual exclusion that should be holded by the system okay and in the next class we will see another important topic from fourth unit thank you